Asus is back with a new 2024 flagship gaming phone, the Asus ROG Phone 8 Pro. In many ways, this one is different from the ROG phones of the past, but does the 8 Pro still have what it takes to be a gaming phone king? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's find out in our full review. Gaming phones in general are a pretty niche product for mobile gaming fans, and the ROG phones have generally set the bar for packing the most gaming-related features and customization options around. This time, though, Asus wanted to make a phone with a more widespread appeal, which can better compete against traditional flagships. This means they've toned down some of the unique hardware features we saw in the past, and in exchange you get a gaming phone with waterproofing, wireless charging, and improved cameras. The design of the phone is more traditional as well. Ours is in a solid matte black, and there are no gamer-style bright colors, metallic elements, or geometric shapes. There is a stripe accent and some text here and there, and the camera bump has an interesting two-step design. The Gorilla Glass back meets an aluminum frame, and the phone is smaller and lighter than last year. There is a bit of gamer flair though, thanks to the lighting on the backside. It's done differently between the vanilla ROG Phone 8 and the Pro model. On the former, you get a light-up RGB logo, while on the Pro, there's a programmable mini-LED matrix. ROG calls this matrix Anime Vision, and it supports black and white GIF animations. There are a bunch preloaded, and you can also create and import your own as well. Also, the signature side port is back. It's a second USB-C port for charging and hooking up accessories in a way that won't obstruct your gaming. The side port also supports DisplayPort 1.4 to get video output from the phone to an external monitor. Even with the extra port, the ROG Phone 8 family has IP68 rated protection against water submersion. That's a first. Previous ROG phones had only up to IP54 splashproofing. Let's go back to the accessories. Perhaps the most important one is the Aeroactive Cooler X. It comes bundled with the most expensive ROG Phone 8 Pro Edition, but with the normal ROG Phone 8 Pro or vanilla ROG Phone 8, you'd have to buy the cooler separately. It's a Peltier cooler, which also has RGB lights, extra button inputs for gaming, a kickstand, and USB Type-C and 3.5mm ports. The cooler is simple to attach, thanks to a spring-loaded latch mechanism. And when it's on, it cools your hands and, more importantly, the phone, for much better sustained performance for those long gaming sessions. Compared to last year's cooler, you're missing both the built-in subwoofer and a couple of the button inputs, but the new one is both smaller and more efficient at cooling. Asus hasn't come out with a new Kunai gamepad controller for this generation, but using the ROG clip, you can connect the phone to something like an Xbox controller, via Bluetooth. Now let's talk about the ROG 8 Pro's display. It's again a 6.78 incher with a 1080p resolution and a 165Hz refresh rate, but this time it's an E6 OLED with LTPO tech. This means that unlike on previous ROG phones, the high refresh rate here is adaptive and dials down to 5Hz or even as low as 1Hz when you're not interacting with the phone to save energy. Something else you'll notice about this display is that rather than having a large top bezel with a selfie cam embedded, now there's a punch hole for that camera. All the bezels are slimmer, resulting in a more modern look, if you don't mind the cutout. But for a gaming phone, actually bezels are useful because they give you space to hold the phone while you're gaming. Asus has finally done away with the notification LED as well. Instead, there's a virtual notification indicator, which lights up the display in the corner to show notification icons. When it comes to the other aspects of this display, it's solid. It's sharp and contrasty, with great color accuracy, and support for HDR10 Plus video content. The brightness is quite impressive as well. We measured a maximum of 830 nits with the manual brightness slider, and this could boost to over 1700 nits in auto mode when exposed to direct light. The audio system has also gone through some changes. You still get a 3.5mm headphone jack. The stereo speakers are no longer front-facing, and the sound is not as full or as bassy as on the ROG Phone 7. The downgrade isn't huge, and the output sounds very good, but in our tests, the ROG 8 Pro doesn't get as loud as its predecessors. For biometric input, the phone has an optical under-display fingerprint reader. It's speedy and accurate. And speaking of inputs, the 8 Pro brings back the air trigger system, but they've been downgraded compared to the previous ROG phones. 
These sensors are no longer ultrasonic, and while they recognize taps, they won't support inputs like long presses, swipes, or slides. You do still get motion controls, which are carried over just the same way they were on the previous generations. Gaming phones should have the best chipset performance around, so it makes sense that the ROG Phone 8 Pro packs the newest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. It's also possible to get up to 24 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM, and up to a terabyte of UFS 4.0 storage here. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 provides significantly better performance than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 you'd find in 2023 flagships. And in the benchmark charts, the ROG Phone 8 Pro sits right up near the top. It crushes every benchmark we throw its way, and these arbitrary numbers do translate into an excellent gaming experience in practice. It's not just about the peak performance either. The sustained performance and thermal management are just as important, and the ROG Phone 8 Pro does a good job, especially with the cooling fan attached. Without the fan, the phone's passive cooling system is able to keep things steady for about 20 minutes before some aggressive thermal throttling kicks in. The phone's rear panel also gets quite hot to the touch. This happens slower if you have the X performance mode turned on. But with the cooler attached, the ROG Phone 8 Pro maintains good performance much longer and stays comfy to hold. This is definitely the optimal way to game with this phone. The user interface of the 8 Pro is quite similar to what we've seen from previous ROG phones, except now it's running on top of the latest Android 14. Asus promises at least two additional OS updates, along with four years of security patches. The X performance mode I mentioned earlier is found within the quick toggles. Something quite useful to have is a solid set of battery care features. Taking care of your battery longevity is important for a device like this one, where you'd be gaming for long hours. The phone has an in-depth overlay which you can call up in-game, called the Game Genie. It includes feedback about performance, as well as plenty of options to choose from. One new feature is something called the AI Grabber. It's able to recognize text from the game's UI and then search the web for it. That's convenient if you're stuck on something and need some tips. There's also a dedicated space in which you can find more in-depth gaming settings called the Armory Crate. The first thing you'll see is a game library for all of your titles. Each title gets its own profile, which you can customize with various options. But even further beyond those, you can dive into the advanced gaming tuning. This gives you a way to change system level values for the phone's internals. Wild stuff. And besides the customization for individual games, there's a console tab through which you can create system-wide changes and get real-time performance data. This is also where you'll find your options for the rear panel animations, the Aeroactive Cooler, Game Genie, and Air Triggers. The ROG Phone 8 Pro actually has a reduced battery capacity compared to previous generations. It's 5,500 mAh instead of 6,000. But even so, the phone scored an awesome active use score of 14 hours and 43 minutes, with great numbers across the board. Overall, the performance is quite similar to the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate, despite the difference in battery capacity. Asus has been relying on 65 watt fast charging tech for some time now, and is pretty competitive. The ROG Phone 8 Pro charged from 0 to 80% in half an hour, and a full charge took 42 minutes. And this year, there's support for wireless charging too, rated at 15 watts. The ROG phones of the past didn't focus a whole lot on cameras, but the ROG Phone 8 Pro is a different story, with this upgraded triple camera setup. The 50 megapixel main cam has gimbal stabilization and a new sensor compared to last year. Then there's a brand new 3x telephoto cam and a 13 megapixel ultra wide cam. The main camera captures 12.5 megapixel photos by default due to pixel binning. These have plenty of detail, though fine details like foliage and grass aren't the most natural when viewed up close. The colors do look nice and natural. Contrast could be better, and you do end up with clipped highlights from time to time, but it's not a major problem. Portrait shots look pretty decent. They can come out at one times or two times zoom, and they have good subject detection and separation. The two times digital zoom from the main cam looks pretty nice, with a good amount of detail and good looking colors. And somehow the contrast and highlights are better here. The ROG Phone 8 Pro will trigger an automatic night mode when it detects low light conditions. These photos come out decent, but mostly unimpressive. They have a good amount of detail, even in darker areas. Light sources are well contained and colors look mostly natural. There is some softness and you can see plenty of visible noise in the frame. You can also enable a dedicated night mode and it's able to clean up a lot of the noise. Details come out looking sharper. Light sources are handled a bit better too. If you have the time and patience, we would recommend going for the longer exposure dedicated night mode. The main cam can capture video at up to 8K resolution at 24 FPS, but of course the file size is huge at this resolution. 
Even in 4K, videos recorded with the main cam are great, with plenty of detail, practically no noise, and decently wide dynamic range. Unfortunately, we once again see the low contrasty look that we had with the photos. The main cam has 6-axis gimbal stabilization, and it works great in combination with electronic stabilization. The lower level, called Adaptive EIS, provides a balance between stabilization and field of view, and it works in 4K resolution. The higher level of stabilization is called Super Hyper Steady. It's really impressive at smoothing things out, but there's a resolution cap of 1080p and a noticeably tighter field of view. In low light, the main camera records decent but mostly unremarkable footage. The detail is there, colors look good, and light sources are handled well. Shadows are dark though, and there is visible noise in the frame. The ROG Phone 8 Pro's telephoto camera produces 8 megapixel photos, and they're very good. Sharpness is good, and you also get nice contrast and dynamic range. Colors aren't a perfect match to the main camera though, they're a bit warmer. In low light, with the auto night mode kicking in, the telephoto cam shots come out kind of dark. The parts of the frame that aren't too dark do still have plenty of detail though. Light sources are handled competently, and colors look good, though they still look warmer than the main cams. Enabling night mode with the long exposure setting on the telephoto doesn't do a whole lot. The difference in brightness is negligible. You can only do 1080p video capture on the telephoto camera. It's pretty good 1080p though, with a surprising level of detail. Just like with stills, colors from the telephoto cam come out warmer than the other cameras. 13 megapixel shots from the ultra-wide camera are pretty nice, with good overall detail, and colors which match the main camera as well. The contrast is again low, but the corners are relatively sharp for this sort of camera. Here's what the ultra-wide cam can do in low light with the automatic night mode processing. The results are decent, there's plenty of detail and not a lot of noise, and the dynamic range isn't too bad. Surfaces are a bit soft, but that's expected. Manually enabling the night mode does brighten up the exposure a bit, but the difference isn't drastic, and otherwise the quality is about the same. Ultra wide cam can record 4K videos, and the quality is not very good. There's enough detail, but the corners are quite soft. And just like with the photos, the contrast is quite low. And the new selfie cam is 32 megapixels, and it has a wider field of view than the one in last year's model. Selfies come out at 8 megapixels, and they have plenty of detail and good looking skin tones. So that's the ASUS ROG Phone 8 Pro. It definitely brings more mainstream appeal than its predecessors. It's more compact and subdued design-wise, and it has proper ingress protection and wireless charging. And last but not least, the cameras have gotten a big upgrade. There are some compromises though, like the smaller battery, the punch hole cutout on the display, and downgrades in both the speakers and the air trigger capacitive controls. Still, at its core, the ROG Phone 8 Pro is a gaming beast with excellent hardware and an industry-leading software package. And if those few compromises are what it takes for more people to notice the ROG Phone lineup and get one, we won't argue with it. Only time will tell, but this phone is well worth recommending. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're looking for an alternative gaming phone, you can check out last year's generation through our reviews of the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate and a comparison between that and the vanilla ROG Phone 7. Let us know what you think, and I'll see you on the next one.